Well, WNBA star Brittany Griner is finally back home after being held in Russia for 294 days. The WNBA star released to U.S. officials on the tarmac in Abu Dhabi as part of a prisoner exchange, and Griner was sentenced to nine years in prison after Russian officials claimed they found marijuana cartridges in her luggage. She was exchanged for convicted arms dealer Victor Boot. And her release is spotlighting tonight two other American citizens who are still held in Russian penal colonies and prisons. Of course, Paul Whelan, as well as another American you may not have heard much about, a teacher by the name of Mark Fogel. Now, Whelan's family receiving the difficult news this week that he would not be included in the final deal. A Marine, he has served four years out of his 16-year sentence in a Russian labor colony on what the Biden administration calls sham espionage charges. Meanwhile, Fogel is a teacher who was arrested last year when he tried to enter the country with medical marijuana. Joe Khalil joining us live now. And Joe, it's interesting that Fogel's charges do sound similar to Griner's. She was classified as wrongfully detained, he was not. Can you help explain that to us? That's a really important question, Natasha, especially when you look at the details of Fogel's case and of Brittany Griner's case. They are really, really similar, but treated differently so far, classified differently by the government. What Griner's case really did, though, is bring attention to not just Fogel's case, but people who've been detained in Russia and elsewhere around the world that weren't really getting a lot of the attention that Griner's case was. I surely hope that they won't keep him for 14 years, but if they kept him for 10, that wouldn't be good. The uncertainty of it all is, is brutal. Mark Fogel is the other American detained in a Russian prison on a trumped up marijuana charge. Unlike WNBA superstar Brittany Griner, his case hasn't gotten international attention. Thursday, his sister Ann on News Nation's Cuomo pleading for officials to help get him home too. I don't understand why they're holding this up unless they believe that he is um, lawfully there, that, that he deserves a 14-year punishment for this. The similarities in Griner's and Fogel's cases are striking. Both were temporarily working in Russia. Both stopped by customs agents for small amounts of marijuana. In Fogel's case, half an ounce of medicinal prescribed by a doctor. And both were given unusually harsh sentences. But the difference in how the U.S. government has handled each case highlights the often complicated nature of diplomacy around getting Americans detained overseas back home. The State Department makes the call whether Americans are wrongfully detained, like in Griner's case, if the person meets certain criteria, like being innocent, targeted for their American citizenship, or held to secure concessions. But for Fogel, despite pressure from his family, lawmakers, and attorneys, the State Department so far has not said he was wrongfully detained. I think every time uh, we make an exchange with a rogue state, with a totalitarian country, with a terrorist group, we are setting a price, in effect, on other Americans. While the Biden administration got praise for getting Griner home, they also faced criticism from some for negotiating with Russia at all and for failing to secure Marine Paul Whelan in Russian prison for three years and counting. Natasha, the U.S. State Department doesn't really keep a public running list of Americans who were detained overseas, but the James Foley Foundation, named for an American journalist killed by ISIS overseas, they estimate about 60 Americans are still potentially wrongfully detained in other places in countries like Russia, Iran, China, Venezuela, uh, in one case in uh, Japan. Now, what do those countries all have in common with the exception of Japan, none of them have great relationships diplomatically with the United States, which means that negotiation for these people may be very tough sledding for diplomats here in the U.S. Natasha. All right, Joe Khalil, appreciate the context live for us in Washington. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.